Hey guys, Thing Fishy here with episode 4 of my in-depth parry tutorial series. The series that digs a little deeper into parrying and gives you some specific input timings if the blanket advice of trying to parry the hand isn't quite working for you yet. And today we are fighting the Godskin Noble. Now although this is a very different fight, the parry strategy is actually broadly similar to what we did on the Godskin Apostle. We're going to be parrying his standard melee attacks and giving him lots of room to do his more dangerous attacks and AoEs. I'll also show you a really fun and consistent way of dodging his dreaded roll attack. Now a couple of things to note about this fight. First off, I'm using the Karian Retaliation Ash of War for this, which I'd highly recommend for reasons that I will explain later. And also, in this fight, you will see me weapon swapping between my plus 6 Eleonora's Pole Blade and my plus 16 Blood Misericord. This is just to optimise the damage and is entirely optional. The same strategy will work without this. Right, let's get to it. First up, we have his most easily readable attack, the Overhead Swing. Again, this is your bread and butter for this fight. You want to be hitting this every single time. The input for this is right here, just before his hand reaches its highest point. Next up, we have his Stab Attack. Now, this can be parried by parrying here, just when his sword passes above his hand. However, he almost always follows this attack with the overhead swing. Now, it might just be me personally, but I always find trying to parry swing attacks far easier than stab attacks. So as this combo is usually the first thing he will do in the fight, I actually got in the habit of rolling this first stab for safety, and then parrying his overhead swing. Next up we have his backhand swing. Your input for this wants to be here, just as his sword's hilt passes his head. So these are the three attacks that you want to be parrying consistently throughout the course of the fight. Now onto his non-parryable attacks, and there's quite a few here, so we'll look at them roughly in the order that you might see them over the course of a fight. First up we have the least threatening of them, this backhanded fist attack. You want to roll this as soon as you see him begin to lunge forward. Next up we have this lunging stab. I don't think I actually managed to parry this one, but it still could be parryable. But because of its speed, I think dodging is actually a safer option here. You want to hit dodge when you see his hand first begin moving towards you. Now onto his black flame attacks. The most common is this throwing attack which you can identify by it being an overarm cast as opposed to the next attack we'll see. You want to roll this as it starts heading towards you. Alternatively, if you're using Karian Retaliation, we can further optimise our damage output by parrying this attack. The Ash of War will then do around 500 points of damage to him. This is a great way of getting some free damage and the reason that I recommend this Ash of War for this fight. Now his other Black Flame attack is this AoE, which you can differentiate from the former by it being an underarm cast, as opposed to that overarm cast that we just saw. This attack creates a circle of Black Flame around the Noble, and you have two options here. By far the safest one is to simply roll away as soon as you see him begin casting. The riskier option is to roll into him. This will actually keep you safe from the Black Flame as long as you can parry his next attack, as trying to dodge away from him while you're in this circle will result in you taking damage. If you do choose the first option and roll away from this, just be aware that he'll usually follow this up with either a Black Flame throw or a stabbing attack. Both of these can be harder to see because of the black flame surrounding him. Dodge or parry the throw and get out of the way of the stab attack. Now for this rolling attack, and this can be scary and almost seem undodgeable at first, but the childishly silly solution is as soon as you see him power up for this attack, run behind one of the many pillars in this arena. This will result in him being caught on the pillar and being unable to attack you. To do this consistently, you want to make sure that you keep the pillar perfectly central between you and him. If you are slightly off centre, he will break free and hit you. Once he's finished rolling, 
he will most of the time follow this up with his very deadly fast stab attack. So put some distance between you and him as quickly as possible after he finishes rolling to prevent this from hitting you. Now for his phase 2 attacks, the only combo that you really want to watch out for here is this quick shockwave attack followed by his massive jumping shockwave attack. For the smaller attack, you can get yourself out of range or just iframe it with a roll here. And for this bigger slam attack, you want to time your dodge for just here when you see him reach the highest point in his jump. When you're comfortable with the timing, I'd actually recommend rolling into this attack as you can use his recovery as an opportunity to get some extra damage in. And that's it. How to parry the Godskin Noble. Now once again, all of this takes practice, but after a while, you'll start to see this guy as being far less dangerous than you first thought. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon.